This is the story of the worst vocal booth, recording booth that I have ever recorded in. Ooh, story time. Hey, hey everyone, this is Aris and welcome to the channel. So needless to say, in my 18 years so far, uh, as a voice actor, I've been working since 2002, I've recorded in several vocal booths. The worst one that I have recorded in by far is the one in this story. So the people that were working there, they were fine. Uh, there was nothing wrong with the people. It doesn't have to do with the people. It has to do not so much with the acoustics as with the level of effort that the people that set the whole business up had not put into building this recording chain. So hear me out. They're taking me into the basement, so way beneath ground level, and I am going downstairs. Uh, there's a long corridor um dark rooms left and right so probably a storage area of sorts and um i'm i keep walking in the corridor with them and they uh, are telling me this is the uh where where, the, where we mix the sound and i see a large room like a very long room with machinery on both ends that i do not understand it wasn't the computer and this was fairly recently so it's not like it was in the 1980s or anything where you know we were recording in tapes and reels and whatever it was like a proper nowadays studio <laughs> and uh, uh so i try to go into the room and say no 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 no. the recording booth is not over here this is where we mix I'm like okay um where's the entrance to the recording booth? They say, you're gonna go that way and they're taking me to another area and this is clearly a very large storage room and they, uh, they're telling me, you're going to go in there into that door. Do you see that door? And I'm like, okay. So I walk past furniture and past old machinery that's dusty and not used anymore. And it's really dark. And I go into this tiny door. I close it behind me. It's a, like a very thin wooden door. And I am in a tiny storage area that looks like a wardrobe. I mean, the size of a walk-in closet and even more claustrophobic. Claustrophobic. And... Um, I am, I am in there, and there are ducts going on um, up above me, um, uh, probably from uh, water lines. I don't know. And there is a microphone, which is a dynamic microphone. So basically, I see this microphone right on a stand, and you know, immediately when you're a voice actor and you see something like this, you go like, "Huh? That's rare." Um, because usually you get you, you use that live on stage if you're a singer, and when you're a voice actor, you use something like this or you know something like this, which is big and proper, and uh, the capsule is big and the the diaphragm is large. I mean, and it's uh, it gives you a proper sound, or something like this, which is you know more intimate uh, or uh, not more intimate, but more direct. I should say this is more direct, and you use this in. Uh, uh, films as well, but you also use it in areas where the acoustic treatment is not so good. So I see something like this, which is great for places that are not acoustically treated very well, but it's also very low gain. So this, in order to, to pick up your voice, like in its fullest, you have to be really close to it. And then they have to like crank up the gain knob a lot in the preamps. So I see this and, I, and, I, and I'm like, I need to be close to this. And I don't know how many people have been close to this before me. I don't know, you know, this was pre-coronavirus, but still I didn't want, you know, to breathe in whatever germs anyone else has on the microphone, uh, has left on the microphone. So there is a pop filter, which, you know, for those that do not know, this is what a pop filter is like. There was a pop filter in front of the microphone, but it wasn't like a proper pop filter because this is a proper pop filter. This is by sure. This is a proper stopper. These take out of the equation all the and the, and the that you may do on the, on the microphone when you perform. So uh, they absorb the, the air and this doesn't go into the microphone. So there was a pop filter, but it wasn't like a built factory built pop filter. It was a made up pop filter, a DIY pop filter. And it was just some wire that they had turned into a circle and then tied up. And then on that wire, there was a sock. Not uh, an athletic type sock, not a man type sock, like a woman thick sock, like stockings. And they didn't even have the decency or the conscience to cut the excess off. So um, 
it was hanging there, and the place, the, the sticky part that goes on the leg of the woman and it sticks there, that was hanging at the bottom underneath the pop filter. So uh, th they had obviously stuck the pop filter onto the microphone because this microphone needs to be addressed really closely. And I was trying to be as close to the pop filter, but it smelled a little bit and I felt like, ugh, I don't want to be very close to that. It probably just smelled of nylon, but in my mind, it smelled like feet and, you know, <laughs> saliva from the pre previous um, voice actors that have worked there. Uh, and it was just horrible. And so I, I look around and I try to put my headphones on. You know, every bit of this story could just be a story on its own, but it just keeps going. So I turn around and I try to look for headphones and I see the headphones hanging on a nail on the wall and they are these old Walkman headphones like that you put on top when you, when people were running in the 80s that kind of headphones proper Walkman headphones I put these on and I'm trying to listen to the sound engineer on the headphones and I'm trying to listen to my voice we're doing a sound check and I'm addressing the microphone as closely as I possibly can so, so like kind of like this and I'm trying to be as professional as possible and it was a um, can't even say what kind of commercial it was so I'm, I'm i'm going at it and i i i'm doing a take and i'm being as loud as possible and as close as possible and i'm getting feedback and the sound engineer says aris can you please be closer to the microphone <laughs> unbelievable i tried to go as close as i can without my lips touching too much my mustache is starting to, to touch the my hair on the mustache is starting to touch the pop filter and I feel totally disgusted. I do a few takes and I, I just, they're telling me, okay, get out of the room and you know, it's fine. And you know, here's another part that the story could end in and it would be fine. It would be a great story on its own, but it keeps going. So I'm going out to, into the mixing room and the sound engineer is over there and he's on one side of the room and you know, in front of a computer running some programs that I do not know about. And I didn't recognize and I know pretty much all the audio programs out there it was probably a video program that i don't know of and um he's saying okay here's the we, we got the recording it was fine really great job now let's transfer it to the other computer so we can mix it i'm like uh okay so you're recording on one computer and you're mixing on another i've never seen this before let's do it so he presses play on that computer because I was just expecting, you know, a file transfer or something. He just presses play and then we hear the whole thing, which was like 15 minutes. And we hear the whole thing while it is being recorded real time onto the other computer on the other side of the room. Full take, full 15 minutes, like sound engineer directions in between takes and all, everything. And we go into the other room and then they, the, they say, okay, now we need to listen to it to see if it was recorded well enough. And we were waiting for another 15 minutes to, to see if, if the recording was good and if we need to, re to do retakes. Thankfully, we didn't need to do retakes because that would have taken all this time all over again. So we are doing, <laughs> after about, about, I don't know, an hour, we are done checking the audio, checking everything, and they're pleased and they go like, you're hired. We want you to do this every week, uh, like twice a week or every couple of weeks. I don't remember. Um, it was three or four years ago, so I don't remember. And they're like, you're hired. And uh, I was like, yay, cool. You do know I have a studio at home, right? And they, they said, no. I said, yeah, I got a booth at home. Can I, do you mind if I record it from home? Because if you felt that my delivery was so good and I don't need to be directed um, by you on the spot, maybe I can just send you the files and if there's something else that you need, maybe I can do a retake or you can monitor from your workplace while I'm uh, in my studio and we can work like that remotely. And they said like, yeah, no, it should work fine. I felt the sound engineer who probably was not the person who chose this setup that he was working in. He was secretly going, yes, 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 I will be receiving the files on this computer. I will just, boom, go straight into editing. I was so relieved they said yes. <laughs> anyway, 
That was a fun day at work. It was、um, pretty rough for me, but I guess if you put it into perspective, not as rough as a miner having the cave collapse on his head. So if you put it in that context, this video is meaningless. But it was fun for me, okay? Just the amateurism and the unprofessionalism. Wait, that's the same thing. That these guys had set up their recording chain in. It was just mind blowing for me. Anyway, that's it for me, guys. I'm gonna go.、Uh, I hope you liked this video. Please、uh, leave a comment if, if you had similar experiences or if you found it funny.、Uh, press the like button, it really helps the channel. And subscribe if you aren't already. I'll see you on the next one. Please, please, until next time, please be kind. Thank、you